everyone, it's Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here to tell you why you should read The Great Cities Duology by N.K. Jemisin. So I do have a full spoiler-free book review for The City We Became. I will link that down below. And the second book, The World We Make, recently came out and I reread the city we became and then immediately jumped into the world we make and I am so glad I did. So what is the series about? So this is part love letter to New York City, part speculative fiction, and it subverts the racism and misogyny that happens in Lovecraft and it's really a celebration of diversity. So the basic idea is that Throughout time, cities are ready to be born and they become something more alive. So at the beginning of the city we became, New York is being born and it becomes alive through six avatars. So we have five boroughs, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, and the Bronx. And then we also have one avatar for New York City as a whole. And they have to come together to defeat this enemy from a parallel universe that wants to destroy the city before it can even begin after it's born. And I am not from New York City. I have never been to New York City, but I really appreciated the way that she incorporated a lot of the things that I know about New York City into this as well as really teaching me a lot about New York. And she talks about some of the horrible things that happen, but she also really gives us a glimpse into the things that make New York City great and why people love living there and really celebrates the diversity in culture, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and just the variety of people you meet. There's definitely a lot of diversity. We have a gay black man who's new to the city and a middle-aged black woman who used to be a rapper and now works for the city government while raising a daughter in a brownstone. We also have a queer Lenape woman in her 60s who runs an art center a 20-something immigrant from India in graduate school, and then a 20-something Irish Catholic woman who lives with her very conservative, very racist, very homophobic police officer father. So definitely a variety of people. And then the avatar of New York City is a homeless black person who is queer. We're not quite sure at first what their gender is, and they're also a very talented street artist. The world building in this book is phenomenal. I am in awe of what she did with the series, and <sighs> mm, so good. So the characterization is fantastic, and she uses the characterization to really help build her world building and it just feels so realistic even with the fantastical elements it i was on the edge of my seat and it was such a powerful powerful story and she does tackle really relevant important issues gentrification white people like radical white people, uh, corporate takeovers, everything, uh, homophobia, racism, all of the huge topics that we're dealing with now and have been dealing with for centuries. She really tackles them in an interesting way in this book without feeling like she's being preachy. It just is what it is. Here's what's going on and here's how it affects these people and she really made me think about things that I had never thought about before or seeing things through someone else's eyes and how they experience the world versus how 
I experience the world. And book two, The World We Make, happens about three months after the events of the city we became, and it just really ramps up what she did in the first book, takes it to a whole new level, and I absolutely adored it. I highly recommend the audiobook. Robin Miles narrates it, and it's so amazing. It's got sound effects that really work well with the story, and especially the enemy that we see. There's a lot of like kind of echoing and like stereo effects that just make it even creepier. And there's one scene where it's almost like these people become like robots and they're just chanting this really scary thing. But the audio just made it even more terrifying. And so many times I just found myself just sitting there listening. Usually I try to like knit or do something while I'm listening. But for both of these audiobooks, I just found myself just completely immersed and oblivious to everything else going on around me. So if you can get access to the audiobooks, I do highly recommend those. And I just, I can't recommend this series enough. She covers so many great topics. And in the second book especially, I really feel like a lot of people will relate to it there is this corrupt mayor that people don't want reelected, and he's talking about making New York City great again and so many parallel parallel things to our world and it is extremely infuriating and terrifying and not terrifying like horror but terrifying like these things are actually happening and people are aware of it and are doing nothing or you know sometimes you just feel so powerless like I want to help but I don't even know how to do it or like the elections when they feel out of your control even though you've done what you could so many different layers in this series it's just fantastic please 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 go read it if you have not already Phenomenal, five out of five stars for the whole series. Highly recommend. So have you read the series? If so, let me know. Or do you think you will read this? If you do, I hope you enjoy it. If you'd like to leave an emoji, leave some kind of skyscraper or building emoji down below. As always, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.